Okay, everybody, welcome back. Um, you ready? Here comes part two. Stay where you are. Here it comes. Um, it's a little different uh, from your experience. So, uh, you know, um, it's much more voluntary, obviously. Right. And, um, and uh, when I got there, though, it, it was just as scary. Um, new environment. I remember waking up uh, in the middle of the night on my first night to the sound of a drill instructor screaming at someone um, <laughs> in our in our uh, dorm yeah. and um, and it you know startled me woke me up out of my sleep and mm -hmm. I thought to myself this is by far the worst decision that I have ever made <laughs> That you know, that's a requirement to have a scary drill sergeant. You have to be scary with a big, loud voice to even be considered to be drill sergeant. But yeah, they they are scary guys, and uh, you know, and, and they get you up in the middle of the night for your basic training too. I guess right. Yeah, um, yeah. So I mean, I think just as we progressed through the training, there was like less and less of that, but. Um, you know, originally, especially if you had like some type of like responsibility, like um, right. responsibility over cleaning the latrine uh, and, you know, he would come in at two o'clock in the morning or whatever and and check out the latrine. And if it wasn't uh, up to his standards, somebody was going to get woken up oh, and yelled boy. at and we're yeah. going to be cleaning the latrine. I've been there, um, done that. I tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. So how, how yeah. long how long was basic training? How many how many weeks or months? How, yeah. What did you go through? So it was like six and a half weeks, um, which uh, you know I think compared to the army and the Marine Corps is not very much. Um, from what I understand now, it's like extended. Um, so it's they're they're trying to build a little bit more of a well rounded fighter. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. There's like. Uh, more significant training on uh, the M16, and um, and I think the uh, the period of time that you spend like out in the field is a lot longer, as well. Right. Yeah. We went through a similar thing where I think it was five or six weeks of basic training, just trying to get everybody in shape. Um, did an awful lot of running. Uh, you learned oh, yeah. about the weapons and things, and then when you graduated the the basic training. Then you went on to your to your vocation, if you will. A lot of guys that in my time they went into the infantry. So you went to um, uh, AIT, Advanced Inter Infantry Training, and yeah. uh, you know you got more in depth with re assembling the weapons and taking care of the weapons and get familiar with all the different weapons that you might run into. And I know in, in my case. Uh, they used to teach you uh, what the enemy had for a weapon, and you also learned how to f repair and fix their weapons in case your weapon, ha something happened to it, you could take okay. it off of somebody else and use their weapon. So you'd be familiar with not only yours, but the enemy's uh, style of combat too. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, And then after you finished basic, then you went on to your vocation training. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so basic training was in uh, San Antonio, Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, after I graduated, um, hopped on a bus and we drove to San Angelo, Texas, which is basically the opposite side of Texas, West Texas, the desert. Um, not a, not a very pretty place. Um, uh -huh. From what I understand, it, it's um, a great place to raise kids, but. Um, but, you know, I never really had much of uh, an experience there outside of, like, the training environment. Mm -hmm. um, and the training environment's kind of awful. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so I don't have, like, you know, super fond memories of San Angelo. But um, but I do remember it being, like, somewhat of a nice place given the, the circumstances. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so, so uh, Intel training... Um, was uh, interesting. Uh, the Air Force Base there is good fellow Air Force Base, and, um, and and there wasn't a whole lot to it. There was no planes or anything. There wasn't. Uh, there was an old flight line that we used to PT, um, 
and every morning, you know, we'd wake up in the dorms and uh, march down to the the schoolhouse and um, and you know learn uh, about imagery, imagery analysis, and mm-hmm. um, and how to identify. Um, <clears throat> at that time, you know, it was a lot of like um, equipment from the former Soviet Union, so uh, aircraft. Um, what, how to uh, identify the silhouette naval. and stuff like that on the ground, or yeah, uh, so so if um, you know if, if uh, image was like presented to us, we'd have to know that that's oh that's a MiG fifteen or um, or, or wow. SU twenty seven or uh, whatever it may be, or what kind of tank it was, and. Um, so you had to be, like you had to be able to identify identified. everything from like a, a silhouette or a photo or, or uh, just any kind of a hint. You, you had to make a guess at it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you ever gone on Google Maps and zoomed in to look at your house or something uh, like that? Sure. Sure. I think we all have done that. Yeah. So it's it's actually really, really similar. Um the the only difference would be uh, that we would only look at things in black and white because um, uh, you know color photographs are like susceptible to to like camouflage or something like that. Mm-hmm. So um, oh, okay, and and then also we would look at like uh, different types of imagery, radar imagery, um, and infrared as well. So you you really had three. You had uh, just the regular visual, or regular black and white picture, and then you had like infrared, and and that shows yeah. heat. Is is infrared the one that shows heat and cold? Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. So that's kind of like something that uh, you know you'd want to use at nighttime when there's no light. Um, so you you can't use just like a regular uh, visual camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just pick up yeah. the things that are given, uh, you know, warm glow, or uh, I guess the equipment gets hot from the sun, and it and it's, uh, takes longer to cool down than the ground itself. What what did exactly. they teach you about that? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it, it produces that contrast, um, and then there are uh, um, self emitters. Uh, so um, humans, for instance, we emit our own heat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're considered a self-emitter, um, and those are easy to identify in infrared imagery. Wow. Um, I would say, like, the the most difficult um, period of time, I guess, would be during the daytime when everything's hot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> then it, then it kind of gets uh, a little difficult to identify stuff. Right, right. Okay. But, yeah, um, so... So kind of like here, here's one of those, I guess, uh, pivot points in my journey where, um, where I tell myself, hey, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? So right. Um, I was originally uh, slated to go to Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, um, which at the time is where my dad was stationed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought, this is great. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can go eat dinner with my dad every night and, you know, just yeah. kind of hang out and um, this is going to be perfect um, and about a a week I would say before I graduated from training um, they said uh, you got new orders you're going to Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas Nevada and you're going to um, be a sensor operator for the Predator. Okay, we're going to take a break right now. Uh, Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next uh, video. Uh, We're going to split them up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.